What I'm gonna be talking about is uh, finding your passion, my experience with that, and how I came for it to be. What happens here is after high school, I'm not doing anything. With my life, all I'm doing is just continuing that escalation of drinking, of drugs, of just chasing girls, and then I get, um, my mom gets really upset and she sends me to the Philippines. It doesn't send me, like, like you're never coming back. It was more like, you need to see like what your family's like in the Philippines because you're wasting your life. And, and, to, and really I was, I was getting in trouble. I was like seeing the cops. Like I had like a, a probation officer and this is me at 18 at the time. And so I go to the Philippines and one of the first things that I remember in the Philippines was uh, I was doing like a community service trip where I was like building a house for the poor. And it was like a level of poverty that I've never seen before. And I remember I saw kids playing basketball and it wasn't even like a real basketball. It was just like a, a board like this and then it had like a circle. And then they, if, they, if they hit the ball on the circle, then that was how they counted the points. Like I don't know what they were doing, but that was what was going on. And so they had a ball and it, and it wasn't even a ball. It was like a trash ball of like poop and it didn't bounce. Like you, I thought you could bounce it and it just stuck to the ground. So it was basically like I was playing football with these kids. And what happened during this time is, is I was playing with these kids, I was having a good time. And I realized like, dude, these kids are freaking happy. Like, look at these kids, they have nothing. And here I am, like, all depressed and, like, chasing girls and doing drugs, smoking pot and doing other horrible drugs. And, and what am I doing? In the United States, just graduated college, high school, barely. It's 2007 at this time. And what was I doing? Why was I doing this to myself? And why, why was I, why were these kids so happy? And I wasn't, and I was in the Philippines. Okay, so just fast forward through that whole trip. I remember flying back, and I remember we go into LA, and it's just beautiful. Lights, big city, you see Staples Center, you see the beach, you just see so much. In my eyes at the time, it was the first time that I saw opportunity. And so that's where it leads me to go into my, my venture. I'm gonna fast forward like quickly. That was what I call like my eye opener. It was when I realized that I had opportunity and that I was wasting my time um, in, in, like in high school and right after high school with drugs and alcohol. So I go to Miramar College. I go to Mesa College and I take the entrance exam. Well, it's not even an entrance exam, anybody can go. But you take a test to see like where you go. Like where do you start basically? And I remember I took the test and I scored like the lowest you could possibly score. I remember that she told me that my, my math and English level was like an eighth grade level. And here I was in college and she like closed the door and everything. She's like, oh my God, like, this guy's retarded. And that was me. And like, she just had to like break it down to me. She's like, did you graduate high school? And I was like, yeah. She's like, how? Like, I was like, I don't know, I just did. And, and so that was, that was how I started. So I started taking these remedial math and English classes, like re very remedial. Like I was taking like algebra, like one, I was taking, I had to take like geometry. And then before I had to take four math classes before I could take one that would finally transfer to San Diego State University. So fast forwarding even further for the sake of time. <laughs> And I go through Mesa and Miramar College. I'm an honor student. I'm 4.0 multiple times. And I apply to San Diego State. And I apply to San Marcos. And um, two weeks into summer, I get my letters. And I'm on the waiting list. So I did all the work. I did everything that they wanted me to do. I did the papers. I did, I, I did uh, the classes. I did the grades. I even had this like crazy story. I went to the Philippines. And I was like, oh, I had like this eye-opening moment, you guys. Like, you guys don't, what? Why isn't this digging with anybody? So I go to San Diego State University. I eventually get denied uh, on the wait list. And I go to the admissions office over, over, over here behind us and uh, the glass building. I, I talked to the, to the ladies. First time I'd ever been on this campus. And uh, I talked to the lady, and she's just like the clerk, and she's like, oh, okay, unfortunately, there were 60,000 applicants, and we only have room for 3,000 transfer students. And I was like, but I did everything. Like, you don't understand, I went to the Philippines. Like, come on. <laughs> and, and so basically, she just told me they're running out. And I was like, no, this isn't happening. And, like, no way am I gonna let this, this one lady prevent me from getting into this university. So I'm like, I need to speak to the director. Like, I gotta do something here. And so I wait like hours and finally I get to speak to the director. And I had no idea what I was gonna tell him. I was like, oh, like Philippine story, like I played basketball, you don't understand, like it wasn't a real ball. And, 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 and there it was, like I, I, I told him my entire story. I told him I started at the very bottom. I had like my papers, I was like, look, 4.0, like ah. And he's just like, yeah, well, unfortunately, thousands of people have a 4.0 and, and you're not the only one. And um, 
So I told him, I was like, listen, if, if I get into San Diego State, I'm going to join as many organizations as I can. I'm going to join everything. I'm going to work for the school. I'm going to live on this campus and be the best Aztec ever. And he's just like, okay. And then that was it. And nothing happened. He didn't let me in at the time. But he just said, okay, like, I'll, I'll, we'll review it. And two weeks later, I get accepted into San Diego State University. And so here comes my journey into San Diego State University. All right. <laughs> Are we with me? <laughs> 2010 and I get accepted into San Diego State University and I remember what it was like the first week we see the booths we see like all these people and we see the girls and we're stoked and, and we see all the booths and we're like oh my god all these I was like in Disneyland like stoked like all these booths like all these different organizations and I was getting all of them I was like oh my god I'm gonna do exactly what I said and I thought I was gonna join like all these organizations in reality I only joined two I joined Sigma Chi fraternity and I joined the Entrepreneur Society two best decisions that that would shape the entire my entire like course of education at San Diego State University and some of the lessons I learned through from graduating that it, most of you guys are still seniors or you're on your way. So first thing that I, I really want to emphasize a lot on is is your major. So how, how do we pick our major? How do, how do we even how do we go about this? We're like, oh, I was good in history or I was good in math in high school. So I might as well be a math major. Or my mom says I should do this, or my dad says I should do this, or I, I googled top 10 jobs of 2013, and, and this is the major I should get. And and why is that? Why why is it that sometimes we pick our major and it's just like boom, like we don't even really spend as much time on it as we do, uh, as we do like spending on Facebook in a week. More girls probably spend more time picking out their prom dress than they do their own major. And and why is that? Why why is it that our major is something that we don't even want to talk about? It's like oh, like this is my major, like this is what I'm doing. So my advice is pick something that matters to you. Pick something that really inspires you and just lifts you up. Pick something that you know you want to study for 10 hours a day for four years of your life. And in fact, we look at it, it's four years of your life. Actually, many of us, five years? Anybody five years? <laughs> All right, five years for me too. So five years of your life, and it could cost anywhere from twenty dollars to $50,000, depending on where you go, and that's a huge financial burden. So my advice do something that matters to you. Do something that you want to do that will lead into a job that you want that is going to empower you to do the things that inspire other people because that's what it's all about. We're here to learn, learn to get a job, learn to build your own business, get the major that's going to get you the most impact, the most for your money. I mean, the second I tell this to high school students, but get involved in organizations. You guys are already in a, like an awesome organization here, Junto Entrepreneur Society. Many of you are on, or many of you are on the executive board. So I am, you know, I encourage that so much. And a third thing that I emphasize a lot on is relationships. A lot of times what prevents people from really breaking through in college is a relationship. You have, uh, I'm not saying they're bad, I'm not saying they're evil and you shouldn't have them. I encourage everybody to get involved in a relationship, but a relationship could really take away a lot of your time. A relationship could, you could be spending all this time with one person when in fact there's 35,000 students at San Diego State University and the whole world is yours. Like go out and seize it. And if a girl's holding you back, if she's not motivating you to become a better man or become a better person, then then that's going to tremendously like reduce your your growth in college, maybe even in life. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but but that's something that was huge for me is uh, relationships. I wouldn't say don't have them, but I wouldn't say that they don't, they shouldn't come first. Um, and I think many of you heard of this already, but Jim Rohn has his, his quote, you're the average of the five people you spend your most time with. This probably, I think, is the greatest life hack of all time. If you change your environment, you change who you're with, you change everything. And you change not only just the people you're with, but you change the way you think. You change the way you act. And you change the things that you do. You change the way that you live. So you are the average of the five people you spend your time with. And that even goes for your income as well. So... Going through college, those are some of the lessons that I learned. And I, I, I had these executive positions through the Entrepreneur Society, through Sigma Chi Fraternity. I had 4.0, and I thought I did everything right. I graduated. And I remember I got my degree, and I was like, I've made it. I've made it. Life is going to be great from here on out. Little did I know that this piece of paper would not do that much. And 
this is reality and this is when it shook me that all the work I did and that I followed everything that you should do and I, I, I t tried so hard to just get the most highest paying job and I did. And it, it took me like weeks and weeks of interviews, driving everywhere, all around San Diego like a madman, trying to get interviews. And I got a job managing a retail store and it paid well. So I thought I had made it and I thought that life was great. And a few things here is, uh, I don't have a board here, but uh, this is what my life was like. Was like, if, if there's an equation, two is greater than five, is what I'm saying. And we look at that math, and, and that's totally wrong. And, and what I'm saying is, is you sacrifice five days of your life to enjoy the two. And that's what I was doing for a year. I thought that this was great. I was like, yeah, like I have money. I'm paying off all my bills, paying off my loans. I can take my girlfriend out anywhere. I'm going to Vegas. I'm going to all these hotels. I'm going downtown, and nothing can phase me. I thought, Psh, I'm good. But little did I know that these two days a week are not worth your entire life. You have five days of your week that I spend doing not work that was just like crazy, but it wasn't for me. I knew that it wasn't what I wanted. I knew that my, the work that I was doing was not inspiring me. In fact, I felt that it was going against my core. Here I was going to all these entrepreneurship events, marketing events through, in the Entrepreneur Society. I was an alumni and I would still come to the Entrepreneur Society uh, events and speaking events. And I was in Junto and here I was in a corporate position and it was going against my core. It was going against who I was and it was just eating me up. And so then I made the decision at about six months that I would quit and that I would start saving up as much money as possible so that I can get to the point where I could just live and, and work on a business that I was passionate about. And so that's what I did. And just about two months ago, I made that move where I quit officially and had my last day of job uh, of work with uh, this retailer. And, and nothing bad against the retailer, but it just wasn't for me. And from that lesson, it's, it's not about the money and it's, it's really about what you do with your time. And it was destroying me as a person to sacrifice my life and who I was for something that I wasn't passionate about. So here I am now, I've, I've built this company, Knowledge for Men, I'm incorporating presently. I, since I, I had the, the website for like most of college and I would average like 15 or 25 hits a day. And, and just last month I had 100,000 visitors to Knowledge for Men and I'm just continuing to grow into July. His name is Aaron Wickham, and he's now my partner with Knowledge for Men. I have um, other advisors and, and CEOs who are supporting me and are acting as advisors. A lot of growth has happened in this amount of time, and it's amazing what you can do when, when you're passionate about something. You wake up. I wake up at 4 in the morning and, like, oh, I like, want to go back to bed usually. I'm just like, dude, let's get going. Like, let's start the day, and I'll just go until 2 a.m., and it doesn't even phase me. And, and that's what it's about is finding something that you want to do, and it doesn't even matter. Time is just an, a never-ending thing, and you don't, you don't look at the clock. You love what you do, and you can't wait to wake up and do it. So that is some of my lessons that I wanted to share with you guys today. So thank you guys for letting me uh, present in front of you guys. Awesome. <laughs> If there's any questions, I'll take them. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. What was your major in college? It was social science because I was studying to be a teacher, and then I switched to social science general, and then got took a minor in business and took as many entrepreneurship and marketing classes as I could in one year. Yeah. But not once in any of my interviews did anybody say, "What was your major? What classes did you take?" Or, or like, oh, you had a 4.0? Like, not once did that ever come up. Like, it was just like, they, I'm like, hey, I graduated from, I'm like, yeah, I see. It, it was never like what I thought it was gonna be like. I was like, oh, I was a part of the entrepreneur. Like, okay, cool. Following you know, college journey through that? Because I remember when we like started. Yeah. 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 Well, before, if you saw it before, I used to have like half naked women on Knowledge for Men. And like, I was trying to just like market, market, market and make as much money as possible. So I took all those ads down and I changed the design. Partnering with Aaron gave me uh, a lot of that came from Aaron. I designed it, but he gave me a lot of insight and valuable advice into how to run a business and make it successful. And I think. Uh, there were a few key articles that I wrote about this journey that I've had, and those were just written out of passion and anger, and 
and love. And, <laughs> and so those articles go on and, and just went like absolutely crazy. Like some of those articles, like first day I published them, got like 20,000 visits. And then continuing to this day, I still get like several hundred visits a day from just one article. And I have several other articles that are similar to that. And, um, and now I'm not writing the articles. I have, I have other entrepreneurs. I have like dating coaches and dating experts who are writing for Knowledge for Men. And then I'm playing as, as, as a manager of those writers. But I still write though, because it's, it's good. <laughs> All right, cool, thanks guys.